All right, so here we're looking at a more completed version of this assignment. Um, the last part of this, oops, come on, backups. Uh, I have this mermaid folder, and this is lengthy work, so I didn't want to go through each individual step, so I'm just going to show a little bit of this. You can see all the different things that I've uh, gone in here to make sure that this looks nice and neat. Um, so let me start off with her body here. There's a torso. Okay. All right, so here's her original torso. And what I did, uh, let me take this other stuff off first. So, I think that's thinking. All right, there we go. That's what I want to get to. All right, so here you can see her body is basically um, put together. Her tail is kind of a blue. I went into the tail options, uh, for example, and I added a hue and saturation, a couple different hue and saturations to get the tail to look the way it looks. Okay, so you can see my options here. I just kind of tinted it towards the blue and desaturated a little bit and lightened it a little bit. I also did a levels on it um, just to uh, give myself a little bit more or a little bit less contrast. Okay, because it's underwater, so there wouldn't be as much, especially with her in the front. Uh, so that's the tail. And then this little piece down here, I just kind of blended it in. I also have this little waist divider here, which is actually just the bottom of a fish lip. Oops. And back to that. Turn everything off. Come on. Okay, so I got that back on. Uh, what I also did um, in this is I added uh, some color adjustments at the end. So you see here there's a, just a hue and saturation because right now it doesn't look like she's underwater. It looks like a bunch of pictures tied together and it looks really, really fake. So I added this hue and saturation to the entire image once I was done. And it just puts it in the blue realm and it desaturates it some. So here it is without, here it is with. I also did a photo filter just to add a little bit more um, deeper blues to it. So you can see how back here this deep blue really gets deep. And then I added a vibrance just to kind of play with some of the colors a little bit more. I added a selective color and that basically the selective color is I can go into my oh, that's, I went to the blacks and I adjusted the cyan of the blacks. And what this does is it takes your shadows, which are black, and it makes them in the bluish realm. So if I don't have this, you can see my shadows look pretty black. So I added this selective color just to tint all the black stuff to more of a cyan bluey color so it looks like it's underwater. The vibrance node is simply that, vibrance and saturation. And a lot of these you just kind of play with. Here's me taking the vibrance up. There's me taking the vibrance down. So realistically, it's kind of like what the look you're going after is what you uh, play with that. Okay, um, here's the photo filter. I just picked a cooling filter. There's also a warming filter, but obviously that wouldn't make sense underwater. We want blue uh, tones. There's a hue and saturation. Like I said, I tinted it, pulled it down. I also did just a colorize. If I don't have the colorize on, um, it doesn't recolor everything. Okay, and then some of these have to play with the opacity as well. So I, I took the, um, here it is, the opacity of this one's 58. This one's also 58. This one's 100. This one's 100, okay? So there's just some ad additional things that I've added. I also have this, okay? I've grouped everything inside here. So here's all my little mermaid pieces in here, okay? Um, so I grouped everything and I put a layer mask on top of it. And I see that's a bit transparent now, a bit more transparent than I was seeing before. So what I'm doing is I'm just basically blending in the edges some. Okay, 
It's gone a little bit rogue here. I may have accidentally brushed when I didn't want to brush. But sometimes you just get these weird uh, edges that just need a little bit of hitting on here just to kind of make them pop a little bit better. Oops. Okay, in this case somehow I went too far. Okay, I definitely don't want to make her transparent. Uh, her tail down here, her little flipper, I did. I made that transparent. Okay, but if she's too hard, it's going to look like she's cut out. So I definitely want to make sure that she's soft looking. Uh, her edges are soft looking, so it looks like it's all one image. See, like right here, this is probably too hard, so I'm going to come in with the black and make sure that's soft. And just hit these edges just so that darkness goes away and they blend in a little bit better with the background. Okay, I don't want to make them transparent, I just want to knock the edges so the edges blend a little bit more. And I'll go back and forth, I'll go uh, hide some of it here and then come back and bring some of it back. Okay, I also was able to make her hair a little bit transparent by doing that same method. That's good. Her arm looks like we lost a little bit here, so we'll put that back in. All right, so now she's a little bit blended in better. Um, I also did this little shading adjustment, okay? So I put this inside of my group here, so it's inside the mermaid, and all this layer is, let me duplicate it, and I'll copy it up here to the top so we can see it. Oops, I have it on overlay also, so I'll put it on normal, put it up to 100%. And you'll see that all this is is just a black and white image, just kind of like darkening some areas and lightening some areas. And then by me putting it on overlay and taking the uh, opacity down, I was able to get it to look a little bit more shaded. So here's with it off, she looks very flat. Here's with it on, it just adds a little bit more uh, shading to her. Okay, a little bit more lighting uh, adjustment. And then throughout this, you're just going to do the same stuff. On the torso, I have a hue and saturation that's adjusting the color of the bra. I have some adjustment layers here that are adjusting what the torso looks like. So if I turn these off, that's what the torso looks like before. And then here are just some adjustments I did just to kind of fill it in. You see there's the shadow for where the bra would be. Okay, there's a levels on the torso as well. Here's the head and arms. See some color adjustments in the hair. And then here's some more hair. Okay. In order for that to blend better, I had to uh, really play with that. All right, and then I've added a couple other things inside here. Uh, one of them uh, was, i name it, this is Sebastian. Just to kind of help sell the idea that this is not just a mermaid, but it's the little mermaid, I added a crab right there. And I also added um, a fork, or as the movie had it, it was called a dingle hopper, I believe. And then I did some color adjustments just so he would turn more yellow, he would turn more red. So I added a flounder hue and saturation to tint him yellow, and Sebastian a red one. And I also added the logo up here, which I was able just to find through Google Images, um, and then do some adjustments. It looks like I have a little smudge right there, so I'm just going to erase this. Okay, and I did have to remake it. It's not like I just found it on there and popped it in. I actually had to go through and use um, some of the selection tools to select the text, and then I just recreated it um, 
inside here. Okay, so another thing I can do just to kind of tidy this whole thing up is, like we've done before, is just add a little vignette to this. So there's that. And I'm just going to marquee box. I'm going to marquee a smaller box. There we go. I'm going to modify feather. And then I'm just going to delete that. There we go. And I could have done a layer mask on this, but I'm not too concerned about that looking perfect. Okay, so that just kind of ties it in. And again, it's it's a subtle effect. We don't want it to be like overpowering. All we want to do is bring our focus into the center. Okay, so you can see how this assignment that takes a lot of Photoshop stuff. There was a lot of clone stamping. I see the little smudge here too that I need to work through, work on. Uh, but there's a lot of clone stamping, and there's a lot of color adjustments, and there's a lot of repositioning. You can see the fork here is laying there perfectly because of a layer mask that I put on it. If I disable the layer mask, there's the fork. There it is. Okay, so I cut that one out using the pen tool and I put a layer mask on there. I cut him out using um, just a layer mask and painting it. You could probably use a little bit more fuzziness. You can see how blurry this is and how in focus he is. So I'm just gonna go to Sebastian and duplicate this first. Drop this into my backups. And then just go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Okay, obviously it's too blurry. It has to be subtle. You know, we don't want it to be like, wow, he's really blurry. Like, maybe like that, 0.3. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay. Uh, and then he's already blurry because he's back there. Okay, but he was actually a separate image I brought in. Okay, and so this is really going to, everything is dependent upon your scene. If she was touching the ground and there was a, a strong light coming here, I'd have to draw in a better shadow. Or if the wall's reflected, I'd have to reflect her into it. Okay, but there are some adjustments in here um, that I just have to play with. But there's lots of Photoshop, lots of things going on. Um, and so the next part of this um, assignment is going to be you're going to open WordPad or Notepad or some sort of typing program, not Photoshop, don't type in Photoshop. And then you're just going to put a little description about what you did. So uh, torso was from one image, head from another image hair from another image, uh, waist, tail, and flipper from another image, Sebastian was separate as well as the fork. Okay. I needed to color adjust, spell the words right, tail pieces and torso pieces to look uniform. I clone stamped the chest to remove some of the straps and shading. I use the Puppet Warp tool to deform the tail and her upper body. I didn't show it, but I did. And then whatever else you've done. Anything that you have done inside here, you really want to explain it. Some of the things are going to be pretty obvious, like you don't have to put, I used a hue and saturation on Sebastian, or I used a hue and saturation on Flounder, okay, because that's obvious. But these things, um, by just looking at them, it's going to be hard to tell, okay? 
So you want to list all the stuff that you did to kind of create this image. All right, it doesn't have to be every single thing you did. Like I said, some of these things are going to be obvious that you did this and this. But if if I didn't specifically bring in the other image and bring in this image and look at them side by side, I wouldn't know that they were uh, done like that. If I have it in here, torso. Okay, here's the original torso, which actually she looked like uh, she had some enhancements done. I didn't want my mermaid to look like she had enhancements done, so I took that off there. Okay, and also these this bikini was actually pretty big, so I had to um, clone stamp some of the bikini out. All right, so that's the kind of stuff that I wouldn't typically know. Now I know where it is in my file, but in your file I'm not gonna know where it is. So I want you just to list all those things to say what you've done, just so I know what to look for. Just so if you say I clone stamped the chest to remove the straps for shading, I can say okay, well where is the chest? It's gonna be inside here. And here's the torso right there. And then in, in the backups, here is your original torso. Everything's labeled, I can see it. Okay, so that's gonna be it. That's going to be um, the final thing. You're gonna turn in your PSD, and you'll also turn in a text document describing what it is you've done. You don't have to list like I did here, torso was from one image, head from another image. You could simply just put image pieces and then head hair torso right tail waist okay you can just list them like that or even just list them right after the other Okay. Remember, this is a Photoshop assignment. We want to push Photoshop. We want to do a lot of things in Photoshop. Not just a lot of things in Photoshop, but we want to make it look like we know lots of different tools inside Photoshop. Looking at this, someone would have no question as to whether the person using this understands Photoshop. And this is a great piece to put in your demo reel, put in your portfolio to say, I do know Photoshop, because you can show all the techniques. You can show, hold on, you can show here is my original image of this, and this is where I've taken it. You also notice I flipped her. You may not have noticed, but I did. Okay, so here's my original image. Here are these pieces. You wouldn't show all the ones you didn't use, just the ones you did. And then here's how I put all this stuff together into this image. Okay. So this is a great way to show off your Photoshop skill, but you really have to push it. You really have to take your Photoshop skills to the next level. Okay, It's not about doing just what you know. It's about taking your stuff and making it better than what you had before. All right. So like I said before, you'll just take this, and I'll just save this. It's not fully complete yet, but I'll just save it to my desktop. Sarcona Mermaid Description. Close that. Save this, close that, still saving, there you go. And then I'll take these two items and I will zip them up. Thinking, thinking, thinking. And then once it's zipped, just like before, you'll just turn that zipped file in, but make sure your name is on it, obviously, so it's not just mermaid or whatever, and I don't know whose it is. All right, and that's that one.